no justice, no peace, no racist police. Policing and race have been a flashpoint for conflict across the country, particularly in Baltimore, where the death of Freddie Gray in police custody has led to protests and public outcry. At the heart of the problem is a simple premise that violent crime can only be stopped with aggressive policing in African-American neighborhoods. It's a strategy that led to Freddie Gray's encounter with police and ultimately his death and has done little to quell the violence in a city that recently established a war room after a record surge in murders. So I, my goal was to have the officer get out the cars and walk foot patrol and get to know the community. But there's another side to this story about policing. And it begins with this man, a former Baltimore homicide detective named Kelvin Sewell. Four years ago, he left Baltimore and its aggressive policing behind and came to this sleepy town on the eastern shore called Pocomoke City that was having its own problems with violent crime. But he didn't create a war room and run drug raids in black neighborhoods. Instead, he took an entirely different approach. He got out of his car and walked. It was a simple move that connected him to the community. By talking to these individuals uh, who, who were living day by day, they accepted me into the community because they see a sense of like I'm caring about them. And marked the beginnings of a strategy that reduced the crime rate to historic lows in only four years. Uh, even the local community here on these streets, these local streets here, have improved a great deal um, far as coming a long way as far as crime. You can walk these streets any time of the hour of the day or the night um, and know you will be safe. But his success has now been marred by what appears to be racial politics. Two weeks ago, Sewell was fired during a closed door session with the city council and the mayor. Policing in America has always involved race, but here in Pocomoke City, people love their black police chief. It is his firing that has caused controversy and raised uncomfortable questions. Residents believe his termination is in part due to race. I, I don't see any other reason why they would fire him. I mean, what, what to me, this is, Pocomoke City is a racist, you know, anyway. A conclusion buttressed by Sewell's attorney, who issued a statement saying, Sewell was let go for refusing to terminate two officers who filed discrimination complaints against the city. Some way they don't like it or, or he stepped on somebody's toes or something. Seeking answers, hundreds turned out at City Hall Monday in a show of support. I, wanted, I want him to be reinstated and I want him to tell us why they took him out. But even in front of a packed crowd, city officials refused to offer an explanation and barred the media from recording the confrontation. The, at times, contentious hearing revealed that Sewell's firing is not the only racially fraught decision made by city leaders in a community equally split in population between whites and African Americans. During the meeting, Council admitted they had appointed a white resident to a council seat behind closed doors to represent a majority black district without the opportunity for the public to have input. It would be good. It would be nice. I would like to see equal balance. If you have a number of whites, come on, let's match it with another nationality. After the meeting, we contacted the mayor and requested an interview but he did not call back. So we went to the neighborhood called Backburn, where Sewell's crime strategy began. It's a predominantly black neighborhood tucked behind the town's wealthier enclave of white picket fences and rolling lawns. It was here at one of the city's most troubled corners where he first stepped out of his patrol car. And it was in this nondescript church parking lot where Sewell ordered his officers to park their cars and do the same. Uh, a lot of people were out on the corners. Like any given time, you could see like 50 or 60 people around here just walking around. And it was drugs, a lot of drugs here. And then so what I, I did was, the first thing I did was had this, this parking lot right here 
in front of the New Macedonia Church as a base type location. And I would have officers come here and park their cars on this lot and then get out the cars and walk foot through these neighborhoods right here. It's an approach, he said, that could work elsewhere, even in Baltimore, where aggressive policing in black neighborhoods has been the approach for decades. Well, I always thought that being a police chief don't mean, I mean, you, you, it don't, it's not all just about the police department, it's about the community. Mm -hmm. And you gotta help, the, my goal was, what can I do for you for, for, to get you to stop using drugs, to get you to stop drinking? to take better care of your family, get you a job. Whatever you need, let me know and I'll make it happen. For now, the question looming over the city is if Chief Sewell will ever walk these streets again. And if the lessons he learned in this small community about policing will be lost in the town's inability to come to terms with its intractable racial divide. For full disclosure, Stephen Janis, who contributed to this report, co-wrote a book with Kelvin Sewell about policing. Reporting for Pocomoke City, Taya Graham for The Real News Network.